Hey everybody, it's Charles from HumbleMechanic.com and today we're talking priming a new oil pump. So we have just worked really hard and spent a lot of money rebuilding our engine. And now we're getting prepped for that very first startup. On that first startup, it's going to be vital to have proper oil pressure instantly. Otherwise, we run the risk of damaging all those high dollar parts we just bought. We're going to be doing this oil pump prime on the VR6. The techniques can apply to many other cars. The method might be a little bit different. Either way, you want to take the steps to prime the oil pump and get oil through as much of the engine as you can before you have that first startup. The tools we're going to need for this job are going to be the tools required to get access to the pump drive, a drill, not an impact. It's really important. We don't want to have the hit of an impact. We simply want to spin the oil pump. You could even spin this by hand if you really wanted to. A six millimeter socket to drive our oil pump a way to drive the socket with the drill. I really like to use a locking drive whenever I'm using sockets on a drill or an impact for that matter. If you don't have that, I highly recommend taping your socket onto your extension. The last thing we wanna do is have to chase a socket covered in oil or worse, have it fall somewhere in an unhappy place. Before getting started, if possible, fill the oil filter up with engine oil. In this case, it's not a great option to do unless I took out one of the oil pressure sensors. But since we're going to be priming it with a drill, that's not really necessary. And of course, we need to make sure before we do any of this stuff, we have oil in our engine. Step one starts when we install the oil pump. I put some assembly lube inside of the pump. I also poured some engine oil into the pump and spun it by hand. As the oil fills inside the pump, you'll actually feel an increase in resistance as you're turning the pump. This is a good thing. You could also submerge the pump in oil and rotate the pump that way to pull oil up through the pump. You can also go the old school route and pack the oil pump with petroleum jelly. This does work. It works really well, in fact. And as the jelly heats up, it'll sort of melt into the oil very quickly, somewhere in the neighborhood of about 140 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're worried about that petroleum jelly being in your oil long term, after can break in when the engine is nice and hot, you can go ahead and drain and replace the engine oil. But in this application, I just used assembly oil and engine oil. I like to refer to that as our base oil pump prime. Next, we're gonna do the intermediate prime. This is not easy on many modern engines. On the VR6, I'm only doing it this way because we have great access to the oil pump drive. If we didn't have this access, I probably would skip this step or do a different method than we did here. First thing we need to do is get access to the plate. In my case, the header is not installed, so it makes it really easy. Then we're gonna remove that plate. Because I wanna make sure I'm rotating the pump in the same direction it'll rotate while the engine's running, I'm gonna put a small mark on the gear and then rotate the engine around by hand to see which way the gear moves. As you can see, our gear is rotating counterclockwise, so we want to, of course, drive the pump counterclockwise as well. We grab our drill setup and slowly start to spin the pump. You'll get oil up really quickly to the place where we're driving that shaft, so you don't want to go full bore with your drill and end up making a mess. This may take a few minutes of spinning your drill to get oil to the top end of the engine, but as soon as you see oil coming out anywhere in the cylinder head, you're probably good to go. I waited until I started to get a good stream of oil out of the turbo feed line because keeping the turbo lubricated is going to be just as important as lubricating the engine itself. Once you got that oil up to the top, we are done. We can go ahead and take our drill out, put our gear back in, throw a new seal on the cover, and install the cover. And finally, we have our final prime. Now, I'm not quite at this step yet. This happens right before you're about to do that first startup, but because of all the questions I've got about doing this, I wanted to make sure to not leave you guys hanging and not leave it out of this video. This is going to be the last step before we finally start the car. We're going to start by making sure that the car does not start. In the case of the VR, the ignition coil is right on the top. It's really easy to just unplug that. You can pull the fuse for the fuel injectors if you like. I don't like to just disconnect the fuel pump in case there's any residual fuel pressure in the rail. It can start briefly. Next, it's pretty easy. Crank the engine over for a few seconds. Stop. Then crank the engine over for a few seconds and stop. Finally, crank the engine over a few more seconds and stop. Doing this usually builds up enough oil pressure so that when you start the car, you have oil pressure in every part of the engine. Once your car's running, of course, we want to do the proper camshaft break-in procedure if camshafts were replaced. Even if you didn't replace the camshaft, generally bringing the engine up off of idle 
is a good practice to be 100% sure we have oil pressure everywhere we need it. Now, what happens if you cannot do this intermediate prime because there's no way to drive the pump independent from the engine? A couple of things we can do. We can skip to final prime. If we've done the good base prime, we can skip right to final prime. When an engine is put in at a shop and not rebuilt, let's say a remanufactured engine, this is typically what happens. It's disconnected so it won't start cranked over a bunch of times, and then finally started up. If you have a variable output oil pump, you need to make sure you're following the repair manual when doing this initial startup. A lot of these variable pressure pumps require you to bypass the variation of pressure, put it in full pressure mode during engine break-in. But again, follow the repair manual for the engine you're working on. This is not a place that we want to make any mistakes. You can also build your own pressure setup, which is something a lot of guys do as well. This is where we'll use a device and actually push oil through the system. I've seen everything from a pressurized soda bottle, pushing oil into the system, to one of those sprayers that you pump up and maybe would spray fertilizer or bug spray with. Filling that with engine oil, pumping it up, taking out an oil pressure sensor, and pushing oil through the system is a really good way as an alternate method to do that intermediate prime. So there we have it. If you guys have any other good methods of priming an oil pump and oil system before you first start up a brand new engine, feel free to leave that down in the comments. As always, other questions or comments, you know what to do. Hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Always appreciate that. Don't forget to subscribe right here on YouTube. Ding the notification bell or for email updates over on HumbleMechanic.com. If you want exclusive content, discounts you can't get anywhere else, to places like Black Forest, Eastwood, MT Knives, Sonic Tools, Petrol Box, My Canic, and more, check out the crew membership program. If that's not your flavor and you still want to help support me, support the work that I do in the show, check out Patreon or the one that costs you zero money. Hit that Amazon affiliate link down in the description and I'll get a little kickback from your Amazon purchases. I really do appreciate that one, guys. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and of course, Snapchat. All right, guys. Hey, I hope this helps you out. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.